Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and what's next. It's a show that asks questions and peels back the layers of our average everyday experience and goes beyond scratching the surface. We interview people doing incredible things who are making a difference around the globe. Join me as we listen in and get one step closer to understanding that big ideas shared create collaboration. Collaboration can inspire community and communities create social change. I'm David Peck and this is Face to Face. So my next interview is with Yama Okami and Andrew Moyer, and we talk about their uh, new film, Hockey Mom. It's available on CBC Gem. You can find it there. Check it out, CBC Docs, POV. Uh, this, is, um, this is a film about, uh, about parenthood. This is a film about trust. It's about relationships and about community. I think it's a film about generosity and, and really understanding what that actually means. Uh, I think this is a film uh, and a story that uh, it's it's called Hockey Mom, by the way, and and I I, I need you to look it up and uh, not only uh, you know it, go go and watch the trailer now, but uh, read 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 the the quick synopsis. This is this is a film that 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 touches on a whole uh, lot of different things, and and we we get into um, the refugee crisis. We talk about newcomers to Canada. We, we, we talk about things like um, relationships and, and why they matter and, and about policy and about presuppositions and what it means to to step into to not only a new uh, a community um, or a new family, but a, but a new country as well. And so we also get into something that I think is really interesting that, that, that needs to be um, unpacked a little bit more, and it's this idea of job survival or survival jobs, as, as Tiama will, will talk about, and it comes up in the film. But it's also an issue, I think, for, for Canadians and for Canada and, and, and maybe even for Global Affairs Canada and how we respond to uh, new Canadians and what does it mean to to mentor folks and what does it mean to come alongside and actually support and actually build capacity in a way that's meaningful and that's going to actually make contact with reality in the long run. So stay tuned. This is a, a relevant story for so many reasons. You don't have to go too far in the news to find out that this is connected in in a variety of ways and not just connected here in Canada. This is a film that needs to be seen uh, globally. There are, you know, the, that whole idea of similarity through difference. There are universals here that apply across the board. So stay tuned. Coming right up, um, a conversation with the two directors for the new film, Hockey Mom. Don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my podcasting and my public speaking. And also, you can even order a copy of Real Change is Incremental there if uh, need be. I uh, would love for you to uh, pick that up. You can uh, get a copy through through uh, Amazon.ca. And um, don't forget, you can advertise on uh, on Face to Face. We have a couple new advertisers. Film.ca is going to be a sponsor coming up in the very near future. And Beer Can Magazine. Can you believe that? Beer Can Magazine. And uh, they are a new sponsor, and we're going to be working together. This is a, a magazine about community. It's about beer, of course, but it's also about, about uh, community. And it's about entrepreneurship, and it's about building businesses, and it's about giving back and legacy and all uh, all of the above, and about building relationships. So you're going to want to look for that as well. Uh, we've got a newsletter you can advertise in, you can advertise online, and of course on the podcast as well. As well. So please reach out if if you feel the need and or the desire to do that. And um, also, um, yeah, rabble.ca. Don't forget you can uh, find a, a not not only uh, my podcast there face to face. You can also find a whole host of other uh, speakers, writers, thinkers, bloggers, podcasters there as well. So, yeah, lots to think about. And uh, don't forget that also coming right up is this wonderful interview with Tiama Alkamli and Andrew Moore talking about their new film, Hockey Mom. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by uh, two two today very special guests with us today. We have Tiama Alkamli and Andrew Moyer here with us, and they are here to talk about, well, as usual, we're going to talk about a whole lot of things, but we're talking mostly, specifically, and intentionally about a new film, new CBC film called Hockey Mom. Uh, Tiama, Andrew, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, 
So, so why don't why don't you guys tell us a little bit about uh, maybe about yourselves, but also just about this uh, getting into this film and into this story? I mean, I would hope most people are already in a way resonating with the title "Hockey Mom," and and you've you've raised some questions for some people, I would imagine. Uh, and and uh, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that journey to the story, if that makes sense. And maybe Tiama, you could you could you could you could uh, dial us into that right out of the gate. Sure. Uh, so I'm a filmmaker, uh, documentary so far. Uh, I was actually born in Syria, in Aleppo. Uh, I moved to Dubai when I was five years old, so I grew up there. And then uh, at 17, I moved to Canada to go to UFC, um, where I studied cinema studies and drama. Um, and how I basically find, found my way to the project was through Andrew. Uh, so maybe he'd like to take it from here. Sure. Uh, I, um, I met a man named Graham McKenzie who ran a, who runs a nonprofit organization called Ready, Set, Play. And that's an organization based in Toronto that, connects kids who need help, you know, resource wise and financially, uh, playing sports. If maybe their parents don't have the means to access sports themselves. So ready, set, play helps connect, you know, kids with sports, gives them resources that they need to participate. And I met Graham and he was telling me about this single mom who lived in a basement apartment in Toronto with her seven-year-old son. Uh, she had come here from Syria and she had left her husband uh, a couple weeks after she moved here. And uh, he was helping her uh, get her son into hockey. And so I thought that that sounded like just a really interesting person and a really interesting family dynamic. Uh, and there was a lot of, about her that I wanted to know more about. So I asked Tiama if she would come meet with me and meet Fatma. And then we started filming with her about a week later. Do, did you, and did you start that before you actually had the sense that you were going to make a, a full length film? Uh, was it really, Hey, let's start recording some of this, get a better sense for where we're heading maybe, and then make that call and yes. look for funding and so on. Is that, I mean, that's often how documentaries start, isn't it? Yeah. Um, there was a, there was a specific grant that I was looking to access that had a deadline, but, uh, yeah, usually how I like to work is I'll hang out with people for a while. I'll film with them for a while. Sometimes I'll film with somebody and, I'll find that, you know, maybe it's not the right time to make a film about them, or maybe there just wasn't, there just isn't enough going on to justify like continuing filming with them for like potentially, you know, two years, who knows how long. Uh, so we just spent time with them in their apartment and uh, we were going to make a short film more focused on Nash playing hockey, but there was just so much going on and Fatma was taking another really big step in her life. Um, and so we decided to keep filming to see what happened. So, so did, how, how much time did you actually spend with the family? Uh, uh, Tiama, uh, Andrew, either of you uh, to, to, to sort of, you know, you said, you said you went in with this idea of a short, a short film. And then obviously, I mean, isn't that a great commentary on, on the human condition? Don't we all have wonderful, deep, complicated stories to tell? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we spent about two years filming with them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And it became, I mean, it's soon a few months into the process. We did realize that there is more here in the story that deserves more time um you know it was a really complex situation uh, especially when we started to learn about um mesh, mesh situation at school um he was getting into a little bit of trouble at school and um, fatma was kind of blaming the um, um the transition from because he grew up in a refugee camp they spent four years in a refugee camp before arriving here in canada so she was really blaming that transition from 
completely unstructured life to, you know, rigid, structured school. Uh, yeah, so a lot of aspects of of their lives was really interesting. And so we thought definitely deserved more time. Yeah. And I guess too, you, did you feel an affinity, uh, for, for this story in a, in a, in a specific way? I mean, you left Syria at five, you must, you must've been paying, you must've been over the last, uh, as about seven or eight years paying much more cl- uh, careful attention. I mean, most of us, I think are, who are aware of, uh, you know, global issues and so on, but, but, did you feel a sense, maybe a sense of responsibility to this story in a way that you might not to something else? Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, of course. Of course I did. Um, I mean, I left Sierra when I was five, but we were there every year, every summer for the whole summer. Um, so we still maintained like quite close relationships. I have a very large extended family um, mm. that we were also all very close. And now all of these people, most of them have left Syria uh, a lot of them are, you know, they're they're spread all over the world. So for me, definitely, it was very personal story. And of course, we've been following um, the Syrian revolution, then the Syrian war for the last nine years. So yeah, it was it was it was definitely essential to to follow a story that shows what happens after refugees right, arrive right, in their host right. countries, right? Because we hear a lot about, yeah, refugees and um, escaping the war and the conditions that they're escaping from and maybe the conditions of the camps. And then they arrive here and what happens next? So... Yeah, and I do. I mean, would you guys agree that that there's probably a, a certain group of us who think that okay, coming coming to Canada, this land, sorry for the cliche, this land of plenty, uh, you know, you're coming to the West. I hope you can hear this or the smile because it is on some levels, right? Of course it is, and it's wonderful, and isn't this amazing? But but there are a whole host of implications there, and I think that comes out. For me, it does in the film. Oh, and by the way, congratulations to both of you on the film. I mean, couldn't couldn't have been an easy story to tell. Couldn't have been an easy story to to get funding for. So, congrats on that. And 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 how about a quick before we go any deeper? Quick shout out. So, CBC Docs, uh, POV Docs. We can see it on CBC Gem. Is that right? Yes. That's that's easy to find. Yes. Yeah, definitely. If you go online to the CBC website, you can find the the Hockey Mom page there on the website, which will take you to the Gem app. That's if you're on a computer. If you're just on a on like an iPad, another device, you can log into CBC Gem app directly and watch it there. There's so 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 there's a, a there's a group of, I think of us who would think that. Um, things are going to be better now. You're coming to, and, and I think this comes out really early on in the film, this notion of building a better life. And isn't this really what this is all about? And isn't that kind of the shout out for all of us, really, in a sense, it seems to me. And and I love, for for me, what I love about doc film is there's this this notion of similarity through difference. And I think that's another layer uh, to to what you're doing with 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 this film, but I wonder about the naivete of that. And you you had mentioned um, uh, TM this idea of of survival jobs. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about that in connection to you know how do you start a new life? This whole idea, you know, um, uh, Fadma wanting to move to Windsor and the challenges of that and the sponsor family and how that plays out in the film. And these these are not easy decisions to make. Sure. Um, well, I think this notion is very much believed on both sides of the ocean. So, for right, example, right. Fatma's family believes that she must be in paradise now. And, then, <laughs> right, and, then, right, of course. and I guess uh, also a lot of people in Canada think that, yes, now these people are they have reached, you know, the shores of of safety and they're doing so by by default, they must be doing better. But um, it's very difficult to move to a whole new country, uh, mm. even when you have planned on it. Um, so, you know, obviously just uprooting yourself in a very normal move um, involves all kinds of hoops that you have to go through. And then also when you arrive, you have to build entirely new networks of friends and career and all kinds of different things. So imagine for somebody who did not really want to come to Canada was somehow like forced um, because they were, you know, because of, because of the war and because of the situation back home. And, um, 
didn't speak any English, didn't have any family, didn't know anybody, a completely different world, is it's very difficult to build yourself up from zero, especially with a little kid. Uh, and not to forget that then she also made the decision to leave her husband very shortly after, as Andrew has, had just said, like two weeks after. So that also complicated things further. And even though she spent a couple of years working very, very hard on herself to get her English from almost zero to a quite a good level, um, wow. and then looking into the job market, there's still very few opportunities for skilled people. Um, so she was a teacher back home in Syria and her, her dream was to ob obviously work in her, in her field here in Canada. But of course it's, it's very difficult because um, she didn't speak very much English. Um, and it's a problem that we see in all kinds of different industries because a lot of people, refugees or immigrants, new Canadians, newcomers arriving here, they are quite um, educated and they do have specialized mm. degrees and they are teachers and they're doctors. And um, because there is no path for them uh, to kind of, you know, equalize these degrees that they already hold, they end up, you know, in survival jobs, just doing whatever just to make some money to, to get their family right. off the ground. So that's something maybe we need to look into. I know for doctors, it's especially difficult in Canada uh, from my personal experience with family friends, uh, friends who ended up in the U.S. or Sweden who were doctors are working, but friends who are in Canada have been here for four years and still unable to. So. Yeah, that's a waste for us as Canadian society, it, it, right? It really is a waste, and it's frustrating, and it's got to be so debilitating to 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 you individually, you know, just even from a from a level of confidence as well, right? To have this this level of education and level of experience, and and basically, well, not basically, not be able to use it in a way that makes sense, that makes contact with reality, and that's meaningful. It's uh, yeah, it doesn't. There's something something not quite right about that. It it, it seems to me andrew what what do you um hmm, what do you uh what what do you take away from this that you didn't know going in i mean from a you know i'm assuming you're canadian mm -hmm. um what 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 do you what do you learn what do you what do you now find yourself thinking about and talking about when it comes to these kinds of issues um well when I had like since since the sort of wave of Syrian migrants came to Canada, I think it's like four years ago, four or five years ago, um, I found myself stumbling upon a lot of stories that were quite um, rosy about how these Syrians were doing, and and like a lot mm. of there was a lot of fascination. Like like people were really fascinated. They wanted to know how they were doing. And it felt like there was a sense for them that there was a sense that they had to perform some kind of, I guess, gratitude that was almost fake. Like hmm. we're doing so well, um, you know. It was oh, a lot like of like, almost like like almost pay lip service, almost. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it was lip service, but like just like it was, it was, you know, maybe politeness on the part of the right. families, yeah. and then also. Um, like this idea that, you know, the people who were bringing them here, like us and us who were hosting them wanted them to do well. So it, there wasn't really much room for anything beyond like, look at this amazing family that's opened up a bakery or something like that. Um, and I was just so curious, like, I was like, what about the people who, you know, aren't uh, self-starters like how are they doing how are the people right. who like didn't know any English how you know how are parents of children doing there was often a lot of you know um focus around children like oh look at this really cute kid who's like made friends you know well what about like all the parents and so mm -hmm. um I found myself like as I got to know Fatma actually kind of like bringing some of those that pressure onto her in my mind like I was expecting that she was that she would be able to I don't know get a job really quickly, 
I was expecting her to like even emotionally settle in like way more quickly than I think was fair for me to, Mm. to think. Uh, And so for me spending time with Fatma and getting to know her and also like getting to know her sponsors really made me reconsider what my notion of success should be for a family that's coming from a war zone, you know, or coming from a refugee camp. Like how Well well Andrew, just you know, it just made me think about it in Tiama, you coming here at five and I went to Montreal when I was six for two years and that's I mean not even close to to, to what so many Syrian families have, have come through. Just that kind of a move alone, right? Like yeah. new school, uh, the, 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 the traumatic components of that, right. Having to make new friends. And we had a neighbor who, who my son still stays in touch with, who moved to, to Florida. And it, I, it was, I think, can, I think we can fairly say it was kind of traumatic, mm-hmm. but, but a different kind of trauma. Right. And, mm-hmm. and just that alone, it makes you start to say, well, hang on a minute here. What, what am I, what am I missing? in this uh, greater conversation about what it means to come, you know, to a new country, something that really stuck with me in your film and quite a few things did. But, but uh, I think it was Fatma who said, we, we all leave our country for different reasons. And I think there's a lot going on in that line. There's, uh, there's a lot packed into that. And, and um, yeah, the, the, that, 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 what, what are the preconceived ideas that we bring to the table when talking about, you know, new Canadians? Mm-hmm. I think it's a situation where, uh, as Andrew said, we do we do expect we do expect them to get here and have be grateful for being here. That's right, be right? Grateful. Like, okay, yes. now you're here, now you're safe. We let so you be, in. We, we let, let you, in. you in. Be grateful. <laughs> you know, forgetting that these people have just escaped a war where bombs have collapsed over their heads where they've seen their family members get blown into pieces where they've had family members be disappeared, uh, end up in prisons and being tortured for years. So it's very difficult Mm. to, you know, of course they are grateful to be here and to be safe. Um, but that doesn't, you know, make the traumatic aspect of surviving a war, any less traumatic, right? You still have to deal with that trauma. And so that's a component that we, you know, often forget. Do you think, do you think it was the right call? I mean, Canada was one of the more, I suppose, if I can use uh, the word generous or open with respect to, to uh, welcoming in, uh, you know, uh, Syrian refugees and so on. Um, was, well, was can, I, the... can I just can I just say something about that? Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, go. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yes, of course, Canada was generous, but um, a country like Germany, for example, has over mm-hmm. a million Syrian refugees right now. Wow. Um, there is three point five million Syrian refugees in Turkey. Um, there are almost a million refugees in Sweden. So there is quite large numbers everywhere in the world. I believe in Mm -hmm. Canada Mm -hmm. with that first wave starting in 2016, that it was 25,000 and then it was 50,000. Yeah. Of course there are still, you know, trickling in, but that policy that in 2016 brought, you know, that sizable amount of people, 50,000 people, I don't think that policy exists so much anymore. When you say and and why do you think that is? Do you think that there's a there's an underlying political uh, edge to that that's troubling you? Um, yes. I mean I, those are those are those are significant numbers, right? I mean Germany, right? Turkey, yeah, right. Yeah, significant numbers, and right. And we and, also and, can get to choose because you have to remember that we here as Canadians, the Canadian government is bringing people like hand picking people. And right. bringing them, people arriving in Europe are just arriving in Europe. So Europe is, I mean, right now I don't know if you've been following what's happening right now. The situation is awful, and Europe has closed its mm. doors, and there's mm-hmm. at the borders mm-hmm. of Turkey and Greece, it's uh, horrific sights. But um, well, it seems to be, Tim. It seems to be getting worse, not better. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, is that, and obviously, you know, the timing of your film is is pretty important. So it's going to be about a whole lot of things, like any great doc, any great story. There's there's a lot more going on than meets the eye. Did, did, when you, did, did you think about that, some of those implications, when you guys were piecing this together? Or did you have a very specific idea in mind of where you wanted this to go? Uh, do you, uh, well, it was commissioned by CBC. So, um, you know, it's going to, it was going to be on TV. It was going to be, um, on their streaming platform. Uh, when it comes to timing, it's not really something that's in our control, but, Mm -hmm. uh, we, I think it's safe to say that like migration is kind of, um, a topic of our time at the moment. Um, they're going to be refuge more and more refugees as time goes on um so i think this is going to be something that people um are going to be thinking about and, uh, it's a it's a subject that people have to kind of grapple with in their own way and they it'll, it's only going to become more intensified with time do you think stories like this help uh you know uh Roger what is it Roger Ebert said in movies were empathy making machines do you do you think stories like this for the most part do do that help to level that playing field help to help to put us in other people's shoes or 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 do you think they can sometimes have have the opposite effect um and i ask that genuinely cuz i think you're right i mean i think i think you know, you can't tell what, what history is going to say until you look back. Right. And so, so I think there's going to be a whole host of films and stories that are told and articles that are being written about this time in history where maybe we didn't do globally a very good job. Maybe we didn't respond. We, we responded, but maybe we didn't respond as well as we could have. Um, sorry, what's the question? Is it, is well, it, uh, are you, uh, I, I mean, uh, well, I mean, storytelling, I'd say for, for, for sure. Um, uh, like this, a story of like a mom and her son, like, absolutely. I, I hope I can only hope that like people can relate to that. Like, even if you've never met like a, you know, a family who are, who are refugee, who are a refugee family, you know, that's, I hope that you can see yourself they, that they'll be able to see themselves in the story. Like, I think, I, I hope that the story can resonate with people who, you know, maybe were raised by a single mom and maybe, or like, you know, if, if you were a kid or if you had a child who had a really, really hard time adjusting in school. And I just hope that the film can resonate with people beyond just the, this, the, the surface of it being about a Syrian family. Does, it, does that answer your question? Yeah, no, I no, I think so. I mean, I think where I was going with it is this idea of exclusivity versus inclusivity. I mean, we we you know, I would hope that we you you guys as filmmakers, me as a podcaster, the reason I do what I do, you know, trying trying to get people to empathize with others, trying to get you know this notion of similarity through difference that that we don't need to be afraid of the other and 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 we can welcome them in. And there's so much to learn. And and like you said, Tiam, about that. I mean, what a waste, you know, not allowing. Uh, you know these these new Canadians to step in in a more significant and a meaningful way, and I I just wonder sometimes if 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 it, if this kind of film, if these kind of stories are just sort of preaching to the converted, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. And my hope and desire is that they're not. Um, um, you know, if if Roger Ebert was right, then then we're going to be okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, stories are. You know, they, they, they we're we're creating empathy here, right? Yeah. I mean, for me, for me, two of the best films I saw this year, and I mean inclusively of of all the film I saw was was For Sama and and The Cave. I saw For Sama, uh, oh, I don't know, eight nine months ago, and mm-hmm. and was privileged to see it before it even hit. Uh, I think it was Hot Docs or TIFF. I can't remember, and was able to get an interview with them right out of the gate, and was mm-hmm. just blown away by not only the film, but, but that, that sort of empathy, like, um, uh, component, that em- empathetic component built, built, built within without even trying, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, that is the hope, right? We make, we make this film and we hope that people, as Andrew was saying, there's so many aspects that are universal to the story that are not just about a Syrian, Um, refugee story right it's about a new immigrant from anywhere in the world can hopefully empathize a single mom 
um, a parent with a troublesome child, um, all kinds of different um, segments of the population hopefully can empathize with it. Um, and also we call it hockey mom, which we hope will right. draw in, um, you know, uh, maybe a crowd that wouldn't necessarily watch it, let's say, um, the film. So yeah, different, different kinds of, um, different kinds of universal stories in one. Yeah, I think that's that's for me. That's the nail on the head. The uni- the universal like nature of this story. I mean, isn't this real? Don't you know? Doesn't she say at one point? I think I may have failed as a mom, mm-hmm. or at least she's questioning herself. And in, in the context of the film, and I mean, isn't that a question that every parent asks? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Isn't, isn't isn't that probably you hope a question that every teacher asks? You know, on some level to become a better mom, become a better dad, a better friend, a better lover, a better teacher, and so on. Mm-hmm. So it's all these moments that you're talking about that I think um, people can easily a- identify with because it is, yeah, like who I'm sure I'm, I'm not a parent, but I, I, I have a lot of friends who are. And I know that a lot of times um, in their parenting life, they do feel like failures. So uh, I hope that also the film, you know, helps them feel less alone and helps them feel that. Mm. No, you're not a failure and you can make it out of this, ex- this specific moment that's made you feel that way. Um, and everybody struggles, but hopefully there is a path to emerging out of that struggle. You know, sadly, we're going to we're going to probably wrap wrap up uh, fairly, fairly soon. But a couple a couple other thoughts I had or questions and there's there's always more, it seems to me. Uh, but can't can it uh, doesn't Fadma say at one point Canada, Canada is my home now and, and my sponsor family is my family. Um, I just I just found that really interesting and also really challenging for me if, uh, you know, to put myself in in her shoes, you know, let's turn turn that coin on its on its head and i'm heading somewhere and i've got a sponsor family and i'm in a different country could i actually even say that would it would i be able to 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 you know step step into a, a that kind of an emotional space um it is is that true would you say for 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 new canadians that canada really is their new home or do you think there's always this sense of i've got i'm gonna have to get back because for me your film is about so many things but it's really um about about finding this place where we're included where we're where we're where we're loved where we're where we're where we're embraced um i think fatma is trying to build herself the best home that she can she's I don't think Canada will ever be her home I think home is gone unfortunately uh, um, but she's doing the best that she can to to make the most of this new life that she has and certainly I think she loves her sponsors I think Mm -hmm. she's very grateful to them like I think she does consider them to be family Um, but I think she misses her real family and she right. misses being around people who understand her in a way that her sponsors just can't. Um, so I guess it remains to be seen like how much home she'll feel here after a few years. Um, I think it's been a really hard, it's like still a journey. It's she's still oh, yeah. kind of figuring that out. Yeah, I would think so. I would think that would go that would go on for for uh, for quite some some time. I mean, just the whole idea of you know trying to connect with people and make friends and 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 build build a community. Uh, Tiama, can you talk to me a little bit? I just uh, I, I didn't didn't get a lot of insight into it, but I, I did do some work with an organization that was connected to something like the Newcomers Kitchen. Can you can you tell me a bit more about that? That just seemed like a you certainly present it like it's a pretty great place. Um, um, I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. And I think our, our listeners would, would enjoy le- learning a little bit more too. Mm-hmm. So New- Newcomer Kitchen, um, was, a it's set up as an NGO that helps Syrian women come together and cook daily meals, uh, once a week. Uh, so it's definitely been a success story in the sense of bringing a community together, um, getting these women together, 
Uh, obviously, when you see them there working and, you know, talking and singing and dancing sometimes, uh, you, you see why initiatives like that are very important because it gives them a sense of home. It gives them a sense of familiarity. It gives them, it also gives them, um, you know, a reason to get out of the house, something to do. Mm-hmm. They do receive mm-hmm. an honorarium also oh, okay. financially. Yep. It's small. It's very small, but you know, it's something. It's something sure. to make them sure. feel that yes, there is, there are um, avenues for them, uh, and there are people who care about them, and there are organization out organizations out there that do want to help foster that sense of community um, to to create this home. Uh, feeling in Canada, which would be the best of both worlds. So what's, uh, what's next? Do you guys, do you guys do a follow-up with the family? Uh, have you, have you talked about that? Has CBC uh, raised that as a possibility? I, I think by the way, it's just a really important film and, and an important story to tell, to, to let Canadians know and not just Canadians, but hopefully uh, the globe as well. And I'd like to hear about that. Cause again, a quick shout out, it's on CBC uh, docs. Uh, for those of you who might be looking for it, um, CBC gem, um, yeah, is 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 that next? Is the distribution side of things next for you guys, or or is there a potential follow up? There was an idea of uh, we do have a lot of uh, material that we like that. were we were yeah that we were uh, thinking about making a feature length theatrical version. Uh, we there are also some ideas of. Um, continuing to film, continuing to follow uh, Fatma, but all of them are just at a, still at a very early stage. Mm. So now, uh, yes, in terms of distribution, we will be looking to get um, the film out there in the world and get it some international distribution. And you had uh, you had an opening opening night just this past week. Is that not right? Yeah. Received well. Tell me, tell me a little bit about that that fun fun side of it, the Q and A, and and uh, yeah, yeah. How did how did that all play out? Yeah, we had our own screening at the Paradise Theater in Toronto. Um, it was really fun. Like most of the people who were in the audience were people who've been involved in making the film, right, so crew right. and uh, like people in Fatma and Madge's life, like their sponsors right. and yep. their sponsors' friends, and I think it was kind of like a victory. <laughs> moment for them because nice. it nice. really showed off like it, i think they everyone just felt like pretty proud of how far fatma's come and uh i think fatma and maj were kind of nervous about it well i know that they were nervous about it because they'd seen the film before but there's a difference between watching it in your living room and then watching it oh yeah with like hundreds of people who know you uh so i they were nervous, but I think that they were proud of their participation by the end of the screening. And Mash came up for the Q and A, and it was really fun. Like we all hung out after, and it was it was a really nice time. Well, that's you know, that's excellent. I uh, I wish you guys well with the film. I I love uh, I love the things, trust, community. Um, generosity and the challenges of just you know the of 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 being human the the stuff that comes out in the film i think is really wonderful and the intimacy you guys were able to create i think is 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 brilliant so so thanks we've we've been talking with uh, andrew moore and tiama al Kamli about their uh, new film their new cbc docs pov film hockey month thanks to you both for your time today really really appreciate it thank you thank you